Hello everyone, so today our topic will be about urinalysis, the normal constituents of urine. Urine is a sterile waste product composed of water-soluble nitrogen products. It is manufactured in the kidney and is being excreted through a process called urination. It normally contains urea, uric acid, creatinine, and other waste products of metabolism, minerals such as potassium, sodium, and chloride ions, vitamins, hormones, and enzymes filtered from the blood. Urinalysis, or UA, it is a test that determines the content of urine. It is also known as routine and microscopy, or RNM. It is an array of tests performed on urine and one of the most common methods of medical diagnosis. Because urine removes toxins and excess liquids from the body, its content can provide vital health information. So urine is often used as a diagnostic feature for many disease conditions. It can be used to detect some types of disease, particularly in the case of metabolic disorders and kidney disease. And it can also be used to uncover evidence of drug abuse. Now, what is the role of our kidneys? Okay, so kidney function, it maintains homeostasis by controlling chemical composition of the blood. The kidneys do this by removing waste products from the blood, leaving nutrients such as proteins and glucose in the blood, maintaining the acid balance, and regulating water and electrolyte balance. Therefore, if the kidneys are functioning properly and the person is in good overall health, urine will be normal. The following are the physical characteristics that can be applied to urine, which includes volume, color, turbidity or transparency, smell or odor, pH, and density. Many of these characteristics are notable and identifiable by vision alone, but some require laboratory testing. Volume of urine. Normal volume of urine expected per day by normal subjects is 1,000 to 2,000 milliliters per day. And the normal expected night urine output is less than 400 ml. The volume of urine excreted per day is influenced by the intake of fluids, proteins, and salt. Excessive perspiration and strenuous activities and our exercises decrease the volume of urine. So what is the normal color of urine? Typically, it's yellow amber or pale yellow due to the presence of the pigment urochrome, but it varies according to the recent diet and the concentration of urine. When the output of urine is low, it appears deep yellow. Drinking more water generally tends to reduce the concentration of urine and therefore causes it to have a lighter color. Dark urine may indicate dehydration, while red urine indicates the presence of red blood cells, which might also be a sign of kidney damage and disease. How about the normal smell of urine? Normal odor or smell of urine is aromatic in nature. Long-standing urine may have an ammoniacal odor due to the decomposition of urea to ammonia. So here are some of the abnormal odors. Fecal smell due to urinary infection, fruity smell, ketosis, mousy odor, phenylketonuria, rancid, tyrosinemia, and maple syrup odor, which is related to MSUD or maple syrup urine disease. The turbidity of the urine sample is gauged subjectively and reported as clear, slightly cloudy, cloudy, opaque, or flocculent. Fresh urine is either clear or very slightly cloudy. Excess turbidity results from the presence of suspended particles in the urine, the cause of which can usually be determined by the results of the microscopic urine sediment examination. Common causes of abnormal turbidity include increased cells, urinary tract infections, or obstructions. 
The pH of normal urine is generally in the range of 4.5 to 8.0, with a typical average being around 6.0. Much of the variation occurs due to diet. For example, high-protein diet results in more acidic urine, but diet rich in vegetables and fruits generally result in more alkaline urine. pH of urine is measured using dipsticks, litmus paper, or pH paper as can be seen from the image on the right. Density, also known as specific gravity, is the ratio of the mass of a volume of a substance compared with the mass of the same volume of distilled water. It indicates the concentrating ability of the kidneys. Urine sample taken for measuring specific gravity is the first morning sample after fluid deprivation for 10 hours. It normally varies from 0.016 to 1.025 average being 1.020. Measurement of specific gravity is done by urinometer. In this table, we can see the organic and inorganic constituents of urine and their normal range of output per day. So the organic constituents are urea, uric acid, creatinine, and hypuric acid, while the normal inorganic constituents are chlorides, sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphates, sulfates, and ammonia. How is urine being collected? Urine is usually collected in a sterile, wide mouth container. There are different forms and methods of urine collection. It can be a first morning sample, random sample, or a 24-hour urine sample. The first morning sample, which is also called an 8-hour specimen, is the first morning specimen collected when the patient first wakes up in the morning, having emptied the bladder before going to sleep. This is a specimen of choice for urinalysis and microscopic analysis since the urine is generally more concentrated due to the length of time the urine is allowed to remain in the bladder and therefore contains relatively higher levels of cellular elements and analytes such as protein if present. Random sample is the most commonly sent to the laboratory for analysis, primarily because it is the easiest to obtain and it is readily available. This specimen is usually submitted for urinalysis and microscopic analysis. However, random specimens can sometimes give an inaccurate view of a patient's health if the specimen is too diluted and analyte values are artificially lowered. Urine samples collected over a 24-hour period are used for a variety of tests, such as those designed to screen and diagnose metabolic or kidney disorders. The 24-hour urine sample can also be used for quantitative estimation of proteins, sugars, electrolytes, and hormones. Tests for inorganic constituents Test for chlorides. In test for chlorides, chloride is precipitated as its silver salt with silver nitrate in the presence of nitric acid. To do this, we take 2 ml of urine and add 0.5 ml of concentrated nitric acid and a few drops to 1 ml of silver nitrate. Note the formation of a curdy or cloudy white precipitate in the form of silver chloride. Test for sulfate. This is derived from the sulfur-containing amino acids. About 85-95% to 95 of sulfur is excreted as inorganic sulfate and the rest as ethereal sulfates. In this test, sulfate is precipitated as barium sulfate with barium chloride. This is done by taking 2 ml of your urine and adding 2 ml of 10% barium chloride. Take note of the formation of a white precipitate. Test for phosphates. Upon warming with ammonium molybdate in the presence of nitric acid, inorganic phosphate is precipitated as canary yellow ammonium phosphomolybdate. 
This is done by taking 5 ml of your urine and adding a few drops of concentrated nitric acid plus a pinch of ammonium molybdate and then warming it up. Take note of the formation of a canary yellow precipitate. Test for calcium. Calcium is precipitated as calcium oxalate in acid medium. To do this, in 5 ml of urine sample, you add 5 drops of 1% acetic acid and add 5 ml of potassium oxalate. Take note of the formation of trace amounts of white precipitate. Now for the last part of this experiment, we are going to talk about tests for organic constituents. Test for urea. Urea is formed in the liver as the end product of protein metabolism, and so its excretion depends on protein intake. Among the organic nitrogenous constituents, the main one is urea. When urea is treated with sodium hypobromide, it decomposes to give nitrogen. This is also called the sodium hypobromide test. To do this, in 2 ml of your urine sample, you add a few drops of sodium hypobromide solution. Take note of the brisk effervescence and the production of nitrogen gas. Test for uric acid, which is also called the phosphotungstic acid test. To do this, in 2 ml of your urine sample, you add a few drops of phosphotungstic acid and a few drops of 20% sodium carbonate. Take note of the blue color that is formed. Uric acid is a reducing agent in strong alkaline condition. It reduces colorless phosphotungstic acid to tungsten blue. Test for creatinine. In this test, you need 2 ml of your urine sample and you add 2 ml saturated picric acid and add a few drops of 10% sodium hydroxide. Take note of the orange color that will be formed. Creatinine reacts with alkaline picrate to form orange creatinine picrate. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.